Okay, uh, uh, I'm going to talk uh, quickly about some linear algebra uh, conventions that I'm going to be using. This looks like it seems to be in focus. Okay, so um, uh, R is going to be a commutative ring. And, um, and what I want to talk about is uh, if I take uh, V, this is going to be a free R module. Uh, R module of uh, rank um, n, okay, and um, what we can do is okay. So because it's a free R module of rank n, we know that V is isomorphic to R direct sum n as uh, R modules, but we don't um, uh, necessarily know. We, we're not given a, a, this isomorphism. We just know that there exists one, okay? So this is what it means to be free. Um, so given a choice of basis, uh, uh, what we can do is, is let's say, v1 through vn of, of v. Um, what we can do is, is we can get a trivialization and by a trivialization, um, so what we mean is a, a, one of these particular isomorphisms. So the definition of a trivialization of a free R module is an isomorphism uh, V, uh, which we'll call phi, to the, this, this direct sum here, up to n. Um, if we were going to do this as uh, like in infinite dimensions, then usually we'll want to maybe, it's convenient to make it this a topological vector space in some way. Um, and okay, and, and let me just say this. So uh, another thing about this trivialization, uh, sometimes we'll say that this VI will go to EI. And this guy here is this, uh, this, is, um, this vector where we have zeros everywhere, except for this one entry. And this one entry, this is the ith uh, entry. And so this is the ith column vector. Okay, so now I, I just want to say some things about um, uh, coordinates. Um, so the, the coordinates, so this is kind of a definition here. Okay, uh, and this is maybe we'll, we'll call this the associated trivialization. So this is a trivialization associated to a given uh, ordered set of uh, elements of the, the vectors, the, this, uh, not vector space, but the free R module that, that make it a free R module. Um, so the coordinates uh, here of a vector, so if, uh, if V is equal to uh, X1, V1, up to Xn, Vn. So these guys here are sometimes called the coordinates. Coordinates. Uh, of of uh, vector in the or the the module element. I'll think of a, a free. So I'm really thinking of free R modules as as acting like vector spaces, and it's true. Okay, um, in in uh, this basis. Uh, so the coordinates of of v in here is uh, these x i's. Uh, Sorry, let's just say coordinates of this. So those these elements here are the coordinates, uh, i.e., um, these pi i's of uh, var phi v. So these are also the coordinates. So these are the ith coordinates, and so this is an element of R. Okay, so. Um, given a linear transformation, so suppose we have two vector spaces and then we're, we're, we have a linear transformation here. So this is an R linear uh, morphism. So this is a morphism of R modules. Okay, and uh, what this means is that, uh, um, and so B I'm going to think of as a matrix and um, so we can always find a matrix, so let's say that, that uh, v1 through v um, n, this is a, a basis for v, 
and W1 up to WM is a basis uh, for W. Okay, then um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that we can always find a matrix uh, that that will transform the coordinates. And now I'm I'm gonna do this in uh, I'm gonna introduce some notation now that that's really convenient. Um, so we're gonna do this Einstein notation. And instead of using uh, the lower subscripts, I'm gonna use upper subscripts. And what it says is we can write a vector here um, like the, in the following way. And so when you have these guys, so when you have these opposite things, so these are just numbers here, but this implies um, uh, summation. So this is the summation over these betas of uh, uh, x beta uh, v beta. Okay, and let's say beta just goes from one to n. So each the each of these uh, for a fixed beta for a fixed beta, these x betas are elements of R, and then these are these basis elements here. Okay, and so this is this what we do for the Einstein notation, and so um, so B here this matrix B is going to be look like uh, B maybe uh, so. Alpha beta. So these are different betas, um, uh, and this guy here will be the um, this, this lower subscript is going to be the um, uh, uh, column coordinate. So this 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 parameterizes the column, and then this parameterizes the row. Okay. So when we write it like this, this matrix is going to be uh, B11. And then B12, etc. B21, B22, etc. So this is the way physicists write things, and it's very useful. Um, and then the linear transformation here that we started with, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take these basis vectors for B, and we're going to be able to write them as. Um, uh, like so, B alpha, beta, uh, W alpha. Okay, and again, these, this is going to be uh, these two guys here are are are, uh, are raised and lowered, so then they're going to sum over each other. Okay, another thing to observe is that when we're doing this with vectors, well, th this will become clear that, that in this form, these things are, are not adjacent to each other. Okay. Um, I claim that this is this is going to look like the matrix multiplication in coordinates. So the claim is that um, uh, in coordinates, uh, the map uh, LB is just matrix multiplication. I B. Okay. Um, let me say just a little bit more about this. So here we're going to have this map V to W, and we have this L B. And what we can do is we can take a trivialization here, two trivializations. So this one comes from the the basis this this basis of W's here. This one comes from the basis of V's. And so this is our direct sum uh, n. This is our direct sum m. And here this is a matrix multiplication. Matrix by uh, b. And this is this matrix where you go b alpha beta. Um, and um, just like so. So alpha um, runs from uh, 1 and then uh, so we're, we're uh, so one and then the, there's W so one to M and then beta goes from one to N okay okay and to see this uh, we just write this out so we'll take V and then we'll write it with its coordinates and then we'll apply LB to V. So this is this thing here is just LB of V. And when we write it out, this is linear, so I can break it up. Then we apply the rule that we had. 
And here we have uh, uh, beta, alpha, beta, w, y, alpha here. And so this thing becomes um, y alpha. And we see that we have this equation um, is equal to, okay, and now these are just all scalars, so it doesn't really matter what order we write them in. And this is the equation here. And now, okay, so unlike this one here, so this thing here is in the usual form, we write it as beta goes from one up to n, of b alpha beta x beta. So this is the non-Einstein version. And you can see that uh, here the indices are next to each other. Okay, so when you have indices next to each other and you're writing things all out in scalars, so this thing's an element of all. So, so notice that for, for each of these things, for fixed alpha, for fixed alpha, um, we have that y alpha is an element of r. For fixed uh, beta, we have x beta is an element of r. And for fixed alpha and beta, uh, we have that b alpha beta is an element of r. So for each one of these fixed things, uh, they're all elements of r. So this thing is a, a, a scalar equation. So it's only involving scalars. And uh, because it's only involving scalars, unlike this one here, so this is a vector here, or a module element, but we'll call it a vector. Um, these things here, um, are, are, are so they're not next to each other. Okay, And maybe you could think of this as maybe um, uh, uh, multiplication by a row vector. So the idea is that raised indices... Uh, so these are column vectors, and lowered, uh, I don't know why I'm putting it in quotes, but let's just put it in quotes for fun. These are row vectors. Okay, so this is another way to think about this. So when you get a really long expression, so like when we have some really long expressions with, in linea with linear algebra, or like uh, expressions like this, like just in these tensors, you, you'll be able to tease out the um, matrix multiplication by just looking at these, uh, these entries, th these things next to each other like this. This is really convenient. And I, I guess no one really explained this to me. In a, in a, I, I think uh, in physics classes this is explained well. And I think maybe this is kind of partially done in um, some Riemannian geometry books. They kind of don't go the full way. Um, there's also some other rules if you have a metric involved with uh, raising and lowering indices, but I'm not going to talk about that uh, right now. Um, if you have questions, maybe you can ask. Um, uh, another thing, I guess the last thing I want to say, well, actually, I'm just going to leave it at this, and, um, uh, and that's, that's all.